Now we're ready to do our binding. I absolutely love my Sewing Revolution Bind Aid. My binding comes out with a perfect bias join every time with this binding, with this bind aid. What I love about the bind aid is it comes with step-by-step -step directions with pictures for every step of the way. So you just can't go wrong and your binding will join perfectly every time. So the first thing you're going to do is cut however many strips that you need and you're going to join them. So I'm going to take and I'm going to join them at right angles here and I can take my bind aid and draw my line for my bias seam. Now I'm going to do this until I make a complete circle. So don't skip this step where it says join required strips to form a circle. We're going to join those all the way around. I'm back using my HP foot and plate again and I'm going to stitch on that line. So there's my bias join and I'm going to repeat that until I've joined my strips in a complete circle. I'm going to trim a quarter inch away from my each seam that I did. So you want to just cut enough strips that you have actually more than what you need to go all the way around your quilt. Okay, now you're going to press the seams to the side and now we're actually going to take one of the seams out. It's going to make sense later on. I'm actually going to remove one of the seams. Once you have trimmed all your seams and you've unpicked one seam, you're then going to press your binding in half, wrong sides together. So now we're at this step in the instructions where we're going to um, seam the binding to our quilt or our runner, whatever it is you have. Um, traditionally, quilters will seam their binding to the front, flip it to the back, and hand sew it. I'm actually going to seam mine to the back, flip it to the front, and machine stitch it down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just placing my binding raw edges together across the top of the runner. I'm going to place the point of my bind aid with the point of my binding here. I'm going to line that, line these up. I'm going to place one pin at one end of the bind aid and I'm going to place another pin at the other end of the bind aid. So I'm going to start sewing here. We're going to miter our corners and I'm going to come all the way around. I'm going to stop sewing when I get to this pin. Okay, so I'm about to stitch my binding onto the back of my wall hanging or my runner here. It's important that this step that I match my thread to my fabric. So I've changed my thread and I've also, I'm using my HP AccuFeed foot now. So my HP AccuFeed foot is going to give me again that HP precision, but with the dual feed to feed all of my layers evenly. I'm going to start sewing where I've got my pin and I'm going to sew to within a quarter of an inch of my corner. Now I know I'm a quarter of an inch away when the edge of my fabric gets to this quarter inch line right here and also there's a quarter inch line right on the foot as well. So when I get to that mark, 
I'm simply going to cut my thread and I'm going to turn my uh, wall hanging here. I'm going to line up my bind aid right at the corner. I'm going to flip my binding up along the bind aid to create that angle. I'm going to place it right back on top. I'm going to pull it back down and that's going to give me a perfect miter. Now I'm going to start a quarter inch in by placing the edge of my fabric at this quarter inch mark and now I know I'm starting a quarter inch in. I'm going to repeat that at each corner. So I'm placing the bind aid again at the corner, flipping my binding up to create the angle, place my bind aid back on top, pull it back down to create my miter, start a quarter inch in again. I'm going to sew to the pin that I inserted at the beginning and then I'm going to stop sewing when I get to there. I'm going to line up the fold of the binding on my bind aid with the fold of the binding. I'm going to slide this along to line up the raw edge with the edge of the bind aid and I'm going to place a dot right on the edge of my bind aid, my binding through that hole in the bind aid. So now I'm going to take the other edge and I'm going to just give it a very slight little tug there and overlap it and I'm going to transfer that marking to this, to the other side of the binding. I'm going to open up my binding now. All right, so what I'm going to do now is line up the angle of my the edge of my binding. So this is why we joined all the way around in a circle in the beginning so I know what that angle is because it very well could have been it could have been this way. So I'm going to line up my angle here. I'm going to line up the fold again and I'm going to slide my bind aid until this hole is over top of the marking that I transferred. And I'm going to draw a line right here and that's where I'm going to cut. Now I'm going to match those dots. I'm going to match this dot to this dot and sew my quarter inch seam. I'm now going to press that seam and look at that. The binding is going to perfectly fit with my perfect bias join. I'm going to finish seaming it across. Save that. So I have a perfect fit every time with my bind aid. Now I'm simply going to press my binding away. If you're seaming this to the front, you're going to flip this to the back and you're going to have to hand sew it. I'm going to stitch it down on the machine. Now I'm simply going to roll my binding to my front 
I like to use my open toe foot so I can see what I'm doing here. You can use a decorative stitch, you can use a top stitch, whatever. I'm using applique stitch number three on my 15,000. I'm going to drop the needle right outside and it's just going to take three little stitches and a tiny little bite out of my binding. You can use um, invisible thread so it doesn't show at all or matching thread. So as you're approaching the corner, you can see this little miter forming here. So you're going to just take that and you can just flip that right up and you can hold it in place with one of your little clips and we're just going to catch that into the applique stitch. As I get to it, I can just hold it in place with my stylus. So I want to just make sure that I actually drop a stitch right into the corner there. One little final press. 